I'm live. Hello. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. I am here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's 9.43 p.m. And I decided I would come in right quick, tell some news, tell some things that have been happening with me because I've been so busy and I've been so preoccupied with everything. I do apologize. I know that it's late um, this evening, but I wanted to pop in right quick and say, hey, I'm here. Um, let me see if I can get some, some people to come and join me this here evening. Praise God. As I pop in right quick. <laughs> hey! Oh my God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Amen. I missed it, y'all. Y'all miss me? I miss y'all. Amen. So I invited you. Hey, sis. Amen. <laughs> oh, hey, sis. How are you? Amen. How are you? I ain't forgot. I love it. Jesus, my God. Let me take this hot sweater off. Amen. I just wanted to come on for a little bit just to talk a little bit, a little stop something. Amen. I missed y'all, though. I did. I missed y'all. I've been busy. Oh, Lord. She said, where have you been? Oh, my God. <laughs> Can I just pop in? <laughs> Somebody else. Where you been? I'm good, Tierra. I see you doing some great things for God. Amen. I'm so proud. Praise God. I was like, listen, I got to I got to go back and listen. Amen. So I just decided to pop in for a moment. Hey, Apostle Odom. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. For welcoming me back into your home, back into your car, back into your job. Just welcome me back. Amen. God bless you, Apostle. Amen. You know, I, I just love God, how God does only what he does. Amen. And so... I was like, well, Lord, you know, I was going to try to get on earlier and, um, I got on work, you know, at the time I get off. Amen. I, I took on a new assignment, praise the Lord. And so I'm not off to about six 30. And so, um, after a while I'm going to be working later than that. And so, um, yeah, I'm so happy. God has really blessed me. Amen. And so I was just sitting here and I was thinking, amen. Hey, Patrice, God bless you, brother. Way, amen. Look at y'all. Y'all just popping on in. Look at <laughs> I love, hey, hey, Minister Hill, amen. Come on now. Woo, come on, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Look here. Mm. Patrice, how you been, sis? I hope to see you um, next Saturday, I think, right? Praise God. I thank God for you, you, and you. Amen. I just want to come on just for a little bit. Hey, Anthony Whitfield. God bless you, brother. Amen. Good to see you as well. Um, just to talk a few minutes, amen, about potential. You know, sometimes we, we, we take potential and we make it be reality, right? We make our potential of others, right? Sometimes you see people falling in love with people because of their potential, right? They, it's, it's like a falsehood, amen, is what I want to say. It, it's a falsehood, right? So we have to be honest with ourselves because why? You can't fall in love with potential, babe. You can't, potential not going to do nothing for you, <laughs> but disappoint you, amen. And so sometimes we'll take that and we'll want the potential of a person or a potential of a thing, right? Oh, my God. Yes. Amen. And, and, and come on. Come on, Apostle Odom. Amen. It's a fairy tale. It's a falsehood. Amen. My God. It's like the enemy is blowing smoke signals at God people. And God is tired of us being tripped up by the potential of other people, baby. He is not that. She is not that. Stop always acting like this person got the potential of your ex or or, or was like somebody else that you once had at one time in your life, right? And then you find out that they not what you had, right? Because they have a potential to be something, but they're not actually living up to the standard of what God is saying that they should be living, right? And so we get disappointed because we fall for the potential of another person. 
Hello? <laughs> and so we have to stop doing that to ourselves. That's a falsehood. That's a, that's a falsehood. That's almost like a false doctrine, right? And so what we do is we fall for the falsehood of what we see or what we think that person can potentially become. Baby, if they don't want it and you want it more than they want it, you need to back away. Because that means that you're falling for the potential of what you see or what you feel. God bless you, Evangelist White. And you got to stop doing that. Man, mm, 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 mm. we become disappointed because we allow ourselves to get in relationships with people that we're not even supposed to be in relationships with. Huh? I remember somebody told me a story one time, and it's in the Bible, about how people will sleep with the fallen angels. Y'all, we fall for the potential. They're angels nonetheless. But they're not the angels what you're looking for. Right? They're, they're not going to give you what you're looking for. Right? You're looking for blessings. You're looking for love. You're looking for contentment. But they're not the ones to give you that. And so what we do is we become so caught up in the caught up of, I want to be in love. It's right here. I want to be in love. I want to be in love. I want to be in a good relationship. And so what we'll do is we'll make that person be something that they're not. Hey, Elder Hawks, amen. We'll make them be something that they're potentially not. God bless you, Apostle uh, Thompson. And so we got to stop doing that. Let me tell you something. The Bible says Jesus Christ same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the only one that won't change on you. And we have to stop allowing ourselves to get caught up in the potential of man and woman. But we do that because why? We have a need as what we think. <laughs> oh, you know, God, I'm going to meet my soulmate, and that person's going to make me whole. Baby, you came into the relationship already whole. Stop doing that. Huh? You already whole. The only, one, the only one that can make you whole is God. A man or woman can't make you whole. God didn't make half of you. He made 100% you. He made all of you. He made everything that you need. Now, I'm not saying you don't get with another person and y'all become the two, become one flesh. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we got to stop looking at these falsehoods. We keep putting ourselves in the mindset to think that if, if I don't find my better half, baby, I'm the better half. Hey, <laughs> look here. Oh, oh, hey, 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 Sister Jones, hey, amen. God bless you. I'm the better half. I'm a good thing. Hey, hey. I'm a good thing. So I'm not looking for my good thing. I'm not searching for my good thing. Huh? Because I'm the good thing. Right? And so we have to understand that women are taking on the role of men. Women are taking an exchange of what a man. So I'm not chasing no brother. I'm not chasing behind nobody. I'm not chasing nobody to be my friend, to be my sister, to be my brother, to be my mate. I'm not going to do that. Because everything that makes me who I am, God has already poured into me. And God is pulling out of me what needs to come out of me. I'm not waiting on no man to come tap in and say, oh, well, listen, I, I, I went into the secret place. The Bible says he that dwells in the secret place in the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's the only secret place I want to go in. I'm not looking for nobody to make me whole. When Jesus Christ said, I come so that you have life and that more abundantly. So why am I searching out here for man to give me something that man cannot give me? Why am I eagerly searching for somebody to make me whole when I've already been made whole through Christ? When he bled and died on the cross, when he rose again on the third day, I was made whole then. That was done in the completion. It wasn't done halfway. He didn't say, well, okay, I'm going to go to heaven. 
He didn't say, well, oh, 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 okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bless you. He does what he does in the completion. And I love how God is bringing this together for me because I wrote this down and I said, God, I don't understand what, you, what you're talking about. He said, I call you to a place that you're not even prepared for. But I'll prepare you when you get there. God calls us to a place that we are not even prepared for. Every time you go to the grocery store, you don't know what they got, but you prepare a list before you go. You are prepared to go there to the place. And sometimes when you get there, the things that you're searching for is not even there. Oh, my God. But that don't mean you don't prepare for the trip. You don't just go, you know, nearly with it. I don't know what I need from the store. I'm just going to the store. Don't nobody go visit the store unless they got something they need from the store. Do you? And if you do, let me know. That means you ain't got nothing to do. Then you can go shop for me. You understand? You go to a place to be prepared to get what you need to get and come on out. You ever seen your mama say, I'm going to go get what I need and come on out. I ain't getting no extra. I ain't taking nobody with me. I'm going by myself. Because I know if I take these children, and if I take my husband, and if I take my sister friend, I, God bless your prophetess, um, horn, if I take whoever with me, then I'm going in there, and I may come out with a little extra. Or I may be delayed in my process, right? Because I'm trying to go ahead and get the food, go home and cook, right? And so you have to know, well, I, I know I can't take them because I take them. They're going to hold me up because they're going to get to talking on aisle number 10 to somebody. Amen. And that's going to delay my process because, see, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and, and I love it because you go in there, I know exactly where the tomatoes at. They ain't moved them tomatoes. Let me tell y'all something about a store. I love this guy. When you go to the grocery store or Walmart, we could say Walmart, they like to do resets. And I'm, I'm really trying to understand the potential of, of what they see when they do the resets. But the one thing that they don't move is the vegetable aisle. <laughs> do you notice that? Where's it going to go? Think about it. Go into the grocery store. They didn't take the vegetable aisle and put it in the back of the store. Old folks say, baby, when you go to the grocery store, walk the perimeter. Everything you need is in the perimeter of the store. If you come in, you go to the left or to the right, there's your vegetables. Huh? It depends upon what dough you come in, Right? Sometimes it could be on the other side of the store and you'll go to the left. Sometimes it'll be on this side of the store and you'll go to the right. But the one thing they're not going to move is your vegetables. They're not going to move them from that location. It'll take too much to move them. But your cookies and your donuts and your uh, what the other stuff is, your rice, your coffee, your potato chip. Oh, they moved that all around the store. They just put it, we put it over here. No, 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 we're going to reset. We're going to put it back there in the back now. No, we're going to put it over here to the left now. Way back over in the back. And what we do is we go searching for that stuff. And we know in our minds that ain't good for us, right? But we'll go searching for that stuff. You come in, walk the perimeter. Go on and get your vegetables, your fruits, and all that good stuff. All the stuff that's good for you. Mm -hmm. Come on around the curb. You got some meat right there. Come on around the curb. You got some cheese right there. Come on around the curb. Now you in the back of the store now. Baby, go on and get your milk. Go on get your milk products. huh? And as you're walking from the vegetables, it's the bread on the other side of that. You see what I'm saying? Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I see you one. God bless you, Sister Abanita. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Sears. Amen. So I want us to understand that God 
calls us. So you prepare yourself before you go to the grocery store, baby. You, let me tell you something. You don't go to the store and not be prepared to know what you got to go get. Because how many of us, and I used to do that. Oh, no, I know what I need. I got it. I, it's up here. I get to the store, I be like, Lord, the main thing I came in here for, God, I, don't, I didn't even buy it. I ain't even look at it. I ain't even go near it. Because I wasn't prepared for the grocery store. I didn't write it down. I didn't jot it down. Who wait a minute. They put it in my phone. Who wait. I need, to this day, I'm still trying to think about something I need to get from the store that I thought about the other day. And I said, oh, my God, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting I need. I keep forgetting I need. I done been to the grocery store two times. And I ain't got it yet. Because I wasn't prepared. So a lot of times God will call us to a place that we are not, we, we, we're not prepared for, right? But that don't mean that God can't prepare you on the spot. That don't mean God can't download what he wants you to do when you get there. But a lot of times what we do is we won't go because we are not prepared. That's what we think. But when it comes to God, baby, you got to let go of all of that stuff. You can't treat God like you treat man in your job, right? You you go in there and they do a reset. Well, we're going to change some positions on the job. What, what do you mean? Let me tell you something. God wants you to be ready and also prepared because you don't know when he's going to call your name to do something great for him. You don't know the day that he's going to call you and say, listen, today is your day. You got to get up and speak. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What does it mean? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to leave this shirt. I'm leaving out of here. I ain't standing up in here. They done lost their mind. I ain't going to do that. Who? Are you not ready? Uh, who who, who got to prepare you? God. Lord, I need you to speak to me. Speak to me now. Lord, help me. Listen, 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 listen. Sometimes you don't know till you get up there and say, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, girl, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What we doing right now? Ooh, Lord, have mercy. And before you know it, God done said what to you? Say this. Do that. Act like this. Talk like this. Walk like this. Well, wait a minute. I thought I wasn't ready, God. I, but I, in my mind, in, in my mind, God bless you. God bless you, Prophet Ty. Amen. God bless everybody. Amen. I'm so sorry, y'all. Listen, I'm trying to get this out of me. Amen. In my mind, I thought I wasn't ready. But God will speak to me. Because I have need of you, daughter. I have need of you, son. I need you to go when I say go. Amen. I need you to pick up and go where I tell you to go. I need you to go and speak when I tell you to speak. And if I tell you to sit down and shut up, sit down and shut up. But I need you to be obedient. I need you to understand that when your season comes, it may not be a season of preparation all the time. Jesus, just go where I tell you to go. Do what I tell you to do. And stop fighting me. God bless you, Sister Perry. Love you, girl. Stop fighting against me. You want to see the potential of everybody except for the potential of what God has said about you. Oh, my God. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. God is talking to you. He's talking to me. Listen, I'm telling you to go where I say go. Plant where I say plant. Pluck up where I say pluck up, Jeremiah. Do what I say do. And my computer just went off. Yep. Yeah. Need little assistance. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Go where I say go. Come pluck me in, please. Do what I have said and commissioned for you to do. You're waiting on the atmosphere to be conducive for you to get up and speak. What atmosphere? The weather got to be this. <laughs> oh, 
God, it's hot in here. Okay, God, <laughs> I can get up and speak now because it's hot. The Holy Ghost is moving. But what if you don't feel nothing? Oh, my God, help me glory. Hallelujah. What if you get up and don't feel nothing? What if the choir didn't sing two songs? Huh? What if the choir didn't move the people? What you going to do? Oh, you know, because we want the atmosphere to be set. Baby, what, can you set the atmosphere? Can, can you set the atmosphere? Can you get up and pray and say, Lord, 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 God, come on in this room, God. Can you get up and usher in the spirit of God? Because let me tell you something. When we wait on other people to usher in the spirit of God, sometimes it ain't even what you want. You be like, Lord, they could have kept that song. Oh, Jesus. I got to get up. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. And they think you're having a moment. They don't even know. But you relied on somebody else to usher in the presence of God. And they was off. What you gonna do? Hmm? Hmm? You know, we have people say, well, you know, I ain't gonna preach behind nobody, baby. What if you have to do that? Cause let me tell you something. Hot or cold, not lukewarm, right? That's what the Bible says. He says, I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm. And sometimes when we're in the atmosphere in the church, <laughs> sometimes it's not always hot. And somebody has to usher in the presence of God. Somebody has to be the one that says, God, I'll make my make me a living sacrifice. I'll be, I'll be the one that sacrifice God. I'll be the one that'll stand up for you, God. I'll be the one that'll go forward for you, God. I, I can't worry about what they bring to the table. See, sometimes people don't even bring their A game to the table. They just come to the table because they hungry too. Y'all better come on here, Jesus, help me, God. They, they come into the table because they are they prepared to eat as well. But they're not prepared to serve. God, I thank you. They're not prepared to serve the people before you serve the people. And a lot of times we get that thing mixed up because we're looking for the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall upon the worship and the praise and the prayer and nothing happens. Usher in the presence of the Lord and nothing happens. And you stand there like, well, God, I, 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 I'm trying to fear you, Jesus. When truth be told, God said, go ahead and usher me in. You came in with me. Go ahead and usher me on in. Come on in the room, God. Because when you sent me, God, I wasn't already prepared for it. But God, if I carry your spirit on the inside of me, then I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I, I don't care how they how they look at me, how they whispering, how they talking. Because I know God, you prepare me on the spot. I ain't got to worry about it no more. And for all that I don't know, God, you'll download it into me. You'll begin to speak to me, God. That's why in the beginning he said, stop falling for potential of other people. We're so wrong when we do that. Because let me tell you something, we're putting people on pedestals that they shouldn't even be on. We're making people fall that should not be falling. Because we have fallen for the potential of what they can be great. And I'm not saying that they can't be great. What I'm saying is be aware of the fact that when you put people on a pedestal, God going to tip them right on off. Poop. Poop. I will not have no other God before me. He will not allow you. He will not allow me to put nobody before him. 
And we become so carnal minded and so caught up on man and woman. Oh, if it ain't my favorite preacher, I'm not going to church. Oh, if they not prophesying, I'm not. Oh, girl, she's singing. I'm not going. Mm -mm. Because what you don't realize is God can use that person that you don't want to be up there. The same thing with me. I don't, I don't, I don't say things that don't hit home first. God will not allow us to suffer in vain in our lives. He had me to write this down. He said, some of the things you won't get on the mountaintop, but you'll get it while you're climbing. Ooh, ooh. I said, well, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said, you wait until you get to the mountaintop. What about in the climb, honey? See, God is speaking while you're climbing. You're trying to figure out where to plant your feet at next. And God done already spoke where to plant them at. And you ain't stepped down yet. We still waiting on you to make the next step and the next step to contemplate. We still contemplating. Well, God, if, if I step over here, is that, is that a mine? Oh, God, is, is, is it going to be a snake over here, God? Is, is that going to be a hole, God, that I can't see? Don't worry about it. That's what he don't want you to do. We worried about every little thing. Every little thing. Every Oh my God, you got to dot your eyes across your T's, but that ain't how God work. That's, that's not how God work. He said a mind that stayed on him, he'll keep in perfect peace. That's not how God work. See, God don't take one and one and make two. He take one and one and make ten. And you're like, well, what kind of man? This God man. This is this is the God man. Wait a minute. This okay. Well, uh, okay. We're trying to make rational sense of it in our minds. And God says, stop trying to do that. I can bless you climbing the mountain. I don't care if you took one step. Praise God. Here you go. I'm gonna give this to you. Come on, I'm gonna pour this into you, baby. Cause five steps up, I need you to pull that right back out. But God, I'm halfway up the mountain. I know. But you're going to stop right here and preach. Hey, oh, glory, hallelujah. There's somebody that fell down right here on the mountain. You're like, well, well, God, I, 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 I'm still trying to get up there. Oh, wait a minute, God. Wait a minute. I, I'm still trying to climb. What you doing? What you doing? Go ahead, baby. I'm still trying to climb. He said, well, pick them up on your way up. But wait, 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 wait. What What you mean? I'm, I'm trying to get me to the top. Pick them up on your way up. All right, God. Hold on. Well, praise the Lord. Amen, saints. Can I tell you about Jesus? Can, can I tell you where God will meet you right here in the middle of this mountain? Because the funny part about it is you've been waiting on somebody and God sent me. And I'm not your favorite preacher. <laughs> oh, but I am the one that carry the word of God. Huh? So let me tell you what the Lord said. And you go on your way. Huh? He didn't say stay right here. Huh? He said, tell them what I said and go on your way. But see, what we do is we think that this is the know all, the be all. Well, God, I got an applause right here. I got to thank you, Jesus, right here. So I'm going to stay right. No, he didn't tell you to stay right there. He said, go about your way. Go on up the mountain, baby. Because a little while longer, you're going to meet somebody else that's going to need a little help. Huh? They're going to need a little money. Hey, woo. You can't, you can't throw Peter out there. See if we can go have our number. What's such a deal? No, 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 not this time. You're going to have to go in your pocket. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, God. This time, it's about your obedience to me. So you go in your pocket, in your pocketbook. <laughs> Some of y'all going to have to write a check on the fly. Oh, wait a minute. I ain't, ain't got it. So you can't use that excuse. No, 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 no. They got cash out. Wait a minute. Cash out. Praise God. 
and you walk in, in obedience. And so you give what God tell you to give. Oh my God. And when you giving it, guess what? It ain't to be, well, you're going to pay me back. <laughs> Lord, I needed that for that bill. Lord, I, I, I was going to go buy me some shoes. But little did you know that the person you just blessed didn't have no food at home, baby. Ain't eight in days, but one going to tell you that they ain't eight. See, see, see let, me, let, me, let me bless y'all real good. The Lord showed me. He said every person that ain't got food in their house ain't homeless, honey. You got some folks that go to work every day and they just doing everything they can just to pay the light bill, baby, to keep the, to keep the lights on in the house. Hear me? They ain't got enough money to buy no food. And that's all right because God sent you to bless them. Oh, really? When you were trying to go out and buy a new pair of shoes, really? God said, go ahead and give them that money. Bless them with that. How many more shoes do you need? Because God going to make that thing all right. You go ahead and do that what God said do. And watch how God turn that thing back around to you. Because see, sometimes what we do is we look for things as we give out. We look for it to come back in the same way we give it out. But that ain't true. Because you don't know how God going to do that. So go on and climb that mountain a little bit longer. And sometimes God will get you to a certain place in the mountain. He'll say, rest right here. What? Uh-uh, I got to strike while the fire is hot. But who is God to you? Who is God to you? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. But do we believe that? My God, that's who you are. I know, God, that you said but look at how everything is kind of going along, God. He's like, listen, I know the potential of you. I know where I'm taking you, daughter. I know where I'm taking you, son. But I also see the enemy up ahead. <laughs> Wait, man. So when I told you to rest right here, <laughs> I told you to rest because I was tricking the enemy, fooling him, thinking that you were coming on up that mountain. <laughs> hey! And I told you to stop right there. Right before you got to the tip, to the tip top, I told you to stop right there. Because now I'm dealing with you and your obedience towards me. See, all it takes is for me to go, thoop, and you on the top. But see, what you don't know is what's waiting for you when you get to the tip top. It's not what I prepared for you. So I got to move some things out the way. Oh, but we get mad. Oh, my God. We go, oh, we go ham. We be ham sandwiches. Look, I'm, it's my season. It's my time. Says who? Is it God or is it you? Huh? Is it God or is it you? It's your time. Is it really? Is it God or is it you? Is it you making a way? Is it you opening the door? Huh? Or is it God? Hey, Bianca, God bless you. Huh? So you wait right there. Because God got to clear the passageway. I need it clear. Because I don't want nothing to happen when I get there, God. Listen, I've been through this. I've been through that. I walked this mountain, God. And I'm tired. He said, rest in. Rest. Take a rest. Take a moment. Take a breath. Take a wind. Okay, Lord. Okay, God. Whew, I'm tired. God, I've been walking day and night. <laughs> Whew. I, done, I done prophesied. I done laid hands, God. I done woke up the dead. I done, oh, Jesus, I'm tired. He said, I know that. Don't get weary in well-doing. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Everybody, not just the poor. I don't get all of that. You told me to pray right here. I, I kneel before you, God, and I lay before you. 
I didn't know when I was going to eat, let alone talking about feeding somebody else, God. I didn't know when you were going to heal my body, let alone praying for somebody else's healing. God, I didn't know when you were going to make a way for me, when, let alone, God, I've been suffering too, God. But I've been suffering in silence, God. But Lord, I, even though I suffered in silence, I was obedient unto your spirit. And so I take my rest right here on the side of the mountain, almost to the top. Almost. I mean, I can just reach my hand out. Whoop, I'm on the top. But God is saying, I need to clear the way. I need, I need you to work while it's yet day, right? Because they say when man, when night comes, no man can work, right? But what we try to do, we try to work day and night. And God is saying, listen, slow down just one moment. Slow down just one moment. Because see, right here, while you're in the resting spot, I can, I can talk to you a little bit. I, I can tell you what's going to happen when you get on the top. I, I can go ahead and prepare you now because what the Bible says is miracle signs and wonders. Because I, 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 miracle signs and wonders. And, and 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 I'm resting right now, God, because I'm listening. Because I'm wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the strategy. That's not the word today, God. Oh, okay, God, because I'm resting right now, so I can hear you. He said, "Go, go ahead and fast for me, right quick." But God, I'm 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 on the side of the mountain, and, and God, I, I I I'm almost no 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 no. You 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 in your obedience stage. Okay, God, you said you said rest. And fast, rest and fast and pray. He said, because right now where you are, I got you hidden. Ah. You've been doing the work. See, come on, let's, we're going to look down the mountain right now. You Look at how far you come, baby. You've been doing the work. Look at, look, look down the mountain. Hey, come on, Jesus. Hey, woo, look, look down the mountain. Look at all that you did. And it wasn't even in your strength. It was in my strength. Remember that. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I, that was me. Oh, Lord. Remember all that you've done to get here. Your work is never going to be in vain, people of God. Your prayers... Your tears, your witness, your crying out to God, your speaking, even when you weren't sure what you were going to say, all of that's not in vain. But the enemy wants you to think, oh, you were almost to the top. Look at what your God did. He put a stop to you. See, that's the enemy. When he want to come and rear his, because he, he looking over the side of the mountain trying to find you. And you is nowhere to be found. And a lot of times why God got you resting is lonely. Oh, God, I, ain't nobody calling me. Oh, wait a minute. Don't nobody care about me. Don't nobody want to know where I'm at. Don't nobody know what I'm going through. Huh? I, I thought they loved me. Here go the enemy. <laughs> yeah, they don't love you. If they loved you, <laughs> they'll be calling you. If they loved you, they'll be all up in your face. If they loved you, look at all you did. Was it in vain? Mm, I beg the differ. Look at you. You're by yourself now. And we'll let him sit there and yippity yap, tip tap, dap dap. Hey, Elder E, amen. Hey, God bless you, Sister Nicole Anderson. We'll let him sit there and flap his mouth. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop, bloop. Knowing that you know that he wrong. You know he wrong. 
But we get caught up in the feelings after all that. Baby, I ain't seen no little mountain. Praise God. Even if it's a fall, it ain't no little mountain. <laughs> hey, some of us been walking a long time. Climbing the mountain. <laughs> and Jesus was there every step. And the minute when we think that we've arrived, then the enemy shows his head. And God knew that he would do that to you. And so what God did was he took you and took you in the mountain. Oh, my, 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 my. See, the one thing I noticed about the mountains, did you know there was houses built on the side of the mountain? How did they get there? That's the first thing I said. God, how did they get? How? What, what do they got running water? Yes, they do. They got bad They got electricity too. Why would someone build a house on the side of the mountain? Because God told them to. The children of Israel, when they were walking, when they were walking 40, oh God, 40 years. Oh Lord, we had some folks that died. We had some folks to be born. We had some folks that ate. We had some folks that slept. But they kept going. <laughs> Did one time they thought the first year, one year, I, I can't do it no more. I ain't, I ain't do it no more. I'm, I'm gone. I'm going down. I'm going up or down. Which one? Which one? I, I, I'm going to build my house right here. I'm not going no further, God. Now, I don't know, Moses. You, somebody lied. <laughs> somebody lied. Because we ain't going nowhere. We going, but we ain't getting nowhere here. But the one thing that God showed me was they still lived. They still had food. They still had water. They still had shelter. In the midst of that time. They still had their buddies, their friends, their husbands, their wives. They still populated the community. They still had calves. They still had milk. They still had vegetables. <laughs> because they survived. You understand? And so what the, what the Bible says, he said, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So when we think that we hot and God said, take a rest and he's keeping you because I know that this could destroy you. If I let you go on up to the tip top of the mountain, because I need to teach you something right here. Oh, buddy, boy, boy. Don't call me. I'm going to tell you about yourself. Don't call me. Don't call me. Call me looking like what? What you want me to do? I've been there. I've been on that side too. I've been up there. Woo, we going. And God said, no, nope, we're not going. <laughs> we're going right here. We're we going right here. This is right here where you going. This is you right here. All this. Look. Look as far as you can see. I don't see nothing but trees. Then that's you. That's all you. Go in there and talk to the trees. Go on talk to the, to the buzzards and the bees and the flowers and the trees. Go on talk to them. Huh? Because that's all you right here. All you. Because I have to prepare you. Because this next move of God, I got to get you right. Some of us, oh my God, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to say this. Some of us have such an open heaven over us that we are looking down that we can't see it. God is preparing you for great and mighty things. He said, I'm preparing you for great exploits. But you're too busy looking at yourself. You're too busy looking down and around and worrying about the atmosphere of where you are right now to not see where I'm taking you to. What I'm doing in you is greater than what you've ever... Oh, Jesus, my God. He said it's greater than what you've ever seen before in your life. God bless you, Phoenix. God bless you, Jasmine. Amen. Greater than you've ever seen. In your own time. <laughs> Jesus. In your own time. <laughs> you ain't seen it. 
And that's what's wrong with us. Because we're trying to mimic what we see. Oh. Oh, they, they pray like that. I, I, I want to pray like No, you don't. No, you don't. You want to pray like God told you to pray. Hmm? You want to sing like God. You want to preach. You want to prophesy like God told you. Not how he told them. Huh? Hey, he's, he's, ooh, 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 ooh. You want to be what God has called you. In every aspect of your life, you want to be everything that God has called you. And what that look like, you ain't seen it yet. Sorry. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I ain't sorry. You ain't seen it. You seen some aspects of it. You seen some glimpse of it. Oh, that looked familiar. But you ain't seen it. The Holy Ghost will do a new thing in you. When we allow him to do it. But we're so busy trying to surface in the old. We're trying to communicate in the old. Oh, girl, you speaking tongues, same tongue. You had that tongue about 10 years now. Come on, let it go. God, we need a new tongue. Hey, refresh in the name of Jesus. Refresh it now, God. Hey, we need a new prayer. Refresh it now, God. Begin to speak to your son, your daughter, God. Hey, refresh that. Make it all new, God. Hey, let them speak tongue. Let them speak like they never heard before as angels, Jesus. God bless you, Prophet of Sims. Because why? We, 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 we're done with the old. I don't care about the old. Who's going on before me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But guess what? Any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. But old, old things become new. And I want to be new in God. I want to be new. I want to be refreshed. Jesus, touch me again. I don't want to be like I seen it. I don't want to be that. It's already been done. I want to be new. <laughs> oh, oh God, I want to be new. <laughs> I want, I want to be. I want to speak in a new tongue, God. I want to speak. I want to lay hands afresh, God. I want, I want to pray like I never prayed before. I want to be new. I want to be new, God. Renew my mind. Renew my heart. Renew me. Refresh me. Fill me again, God, with your spirit. Regenerate in me what I haven't seen, God. And God, when I begin to see it, when it begins to manifest itself, don't let me be afraid because I'm not used to it, God. But God, let me walk in the newness of you, God. <laughs> Ooh, every door that you open, God, I want to run in there. Because I know God is you. I want to do what you say. Do I want to say it. I want to see new visions and dreams, God. I want to prophesy like I never prophesied before, God. Let me see. Let me see deep into the spirit realm, God. Because I want that, God, that's new. I don't want to walk around talking about, well, you know, you prophesied that 10 years ago. Oh, well, you, you touched that on that 10 years ago. Yeah, you brought a word and it was good, but we heard it before. I won't know, God. I won't know. I won't know. I won't know. And that's what he says. I want to give you a new daughter. I want to give you a new son. But you got to be willing. You got to open yourself up to me. And I'm going to pour in. I'm pouring it. Oh, the oil, God, I thank you. Whew. I thank you for the oil. Hey. I thank you, God, for the oil. Hey. That oil that ran down Aaron's beard was not the same oil. <laughs> Whew, but it became life. It refreshed my soul. God, I want the newness of you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. My God. Thank you, Lord. 
I want to do what I've never seen before. I want to say what I've never said before. I want to be what I've never been before. Just because they were that don't mean I got to be that and limit myself to just that, God. You're a limitless God. And hey, my God. <laughs> and your anointing is a fresh God. Fall upon your people, God. Fall upon us, God. Touch us again, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Touch us again, God. Don't let us hinder ourselves, God. Don't let us stop what you told us to be, God. I don't care what day, what hour, what moment, God. If you tell us to go talk to the person on the corner, God, let me pull my car over and talk to them, God. Let me see them, God, as what you see, God. I, I don't want to use my own eye. Now, see, let me tell you something. Potential in your eyes will fool you every time. I want to see them as you see them. I want to love like you because your love is perfect. Because perfect love casts out fear. And I don't want to be nothing else but like you, Jesus. Huh? I want to see what you see in them, God. Not what I see. See, I'm going to short that thing every time, God. Even in myself when I look in the mirror. <laughs> Hoo -wee! Thank you, Jesus. That I see me new. I see me refreshed. I see me on top of the mountain, God. I see me when you said stop and rest a little while. I see me. But God, that know it's in purpose of what you've called me to be. Thank you, Jesus. I won't fight against you, God. I won't go against the spirit of the true and living God. Because I know what you know is best for me. I don't care how many people push. Hey, girl, you supposed to be. Oh, boy, you supposed to. Oh, you supposed to. That's all right. That's all right. It may not be in your time, but God will elevate me. God will elevate you. He will put you where you need to be at the right time, the appointed time. He will put you right where you're supposed to be. Doing what you're supposed to be doing. Everybody said that. Oh, she ain't going to do it. He ain't going to do it. But that's not what God said. <clears throat> He's going to prepare you. He is preparing you now. Mountaintop. Even though you're still climbing. At some time. We get weary and well doing, baby. I I get it. I get, I got it. Cause I know how many times I done walked up the mountain and been like, Lord, I'm tired. <laughs> Lord, I'm so tired. I'm tired. I done told them ten times, God. Them cheering, boy, I tell you, God. <laughs> That oldest one, that youngest one, God, that niece, that nephew, God, my family, God, I done, Lord, I done prayed and, oh, God, I'm tired. But God said, pray one more time <laughs> before you decide to give up. Pray one more time about that husband and that wife. Pray one more time about that job. Pray one more time about your your life, your health, and your strength. Pray one more time about that, baby. Don't give up on me yet. I know you're tired. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I ain't even got to tell me. I can see it. Listen, I know they're not here no more. Some of us have been pawning about those that we've lost, Jesus. And God said, let me be that one. Let me take that place. Let me massage your heart. I'll make it all right. I, I got you. I got you. I, listen, listen to me good. I know it hurt, baby. Oh, it hurt just like it happened yesterday. But I'll be with you. I'll be the one to make it all right. Because let me tell you what's the funny part about that. Because you believe in me. 
And you know that I'm the only one that can change that. Some of us been so broke, it ain't even funny. And God will tell you to bless somebody else, even in your brokenness. And you're like, well, God, who who going to put me together? He said, I am. I am. I'm going to put you together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to mend all that back together. That last relationship where you was broken, your heart, your heart was just hanging off, oh God, by a thread. You didn't know whether you were going to live or die. <laughs> and God was right there with you. Don't give up on me. Not this time. Don't don't fall out with me. Because I love you. I see the conditions that you're in. Listen, even in your mind, I, I see the conditions that you're in. Even in your mind. Hear me. But it doesn't change nothing. You hear me? It, it don't change God. It don't change God. It don't change how God sees and conditions your life. Some of you could have lost your mind. You hear what I say to you? If God had not intervened on your behalf, you could have lost your mind in the midst of that problem, in the midst of that turmoil. But God intervened on your behalf. Hear me. I mean, I'm talking about you was like, I'm done. I'm leaving here. I ain't staying here no more. And you were on the verge of, huh? I'm gone. I'm out. I'm taking myself out. God, you ain't calling me home. I come on home on my own. Jesus Christ. Whew. But God said not so. He stepped in in the midst of it all. What? What you mean? I should live and not die. Lord. But the doctor said. The cancer was going to kill me. Oh, God, the doctor said, diabetes and high blood pressure was going to take me out of here. But, God, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live like this. It hurt too bad, God. It hurt so bad. And you begin to draw back, even from God. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. You begin to draw back. Not just from man. You drew back from God.